Time to get up, go to work. This is Eureka John with Eureka Street Crypto Hub broadcasting live from Theta TV, Theta TV dot wait Theta dot TV forward slash Eureka John is my channel address I think, and it's 5:44 in the morning on May 6th, 2021. It is a Thursday. The week is almost over, and yes, another work day, so I'm up super early. Wednesdays, I don't have to wake up so early because I don't have my commute down to work because I get to work from home. But uh, every other week, I got to go on down and do the deal. Um, so yeah, like I said, time to get up, go to work. And before we go to work, let's take a quick look and see how our crypto bags i hate using that crypto bag hey how's your i mean i got a bag um uh so yeah so let's check it out refresh the old coin gecko here and uh this is my video blog welcome if this is your first time i'm just a dude with a camera i'm not a professional anything and i follow cryptocurrency every single day and every single morning i wake up and look at the state of the market and maybe look at some some uh, articles and some projects and ideas and things that I have discovered from the day before or the night before laying in bed before I go to sleep because I just read news and articles to get me to sleep at night. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and then I talk about it in the morning and then every week or two, every couple weeks I guess, I talk about uh, specifically one project or concept or idea that uh, really intrigues me. And the most recent one I just did last Sunday is uh, the Komodo blockchain. And before that, I did the Pirate blockchain. And let's see, before that, I think it was, I can't remember what I did. I think it may have been Audio Token. Yeah, it was the Audio Token project. And I've done Quant Network, Cardano, Zilliqa, uh, Wrapped Bitcoins, um, Wrapped Bitcoin, and I've done Hedera Hashgraph. I mean, I've done a lot of different projects, um, so yeah, go through my uh, list of uh, videos and uh, just you, you'll find them. They're there. <laughs> so, and in the meantime, during the morning shows, I kind of touch on specific projects here and there. And uh, I got to figure out what to do for my next project-oriented video. Um, not really sure. Uh, I'm thinking possibly uh, like Algorand or uh, maybe the Flare token, the, the Flare network with the Spark token that's going to be dropping here soon. Um, so if you have any ideas on, uh, and Avalanche has, has also been at the top of my mind as well. Um, I've thought about maybe doing the graph. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I'll have to figure this out. So uh, yeah, maybe Kusama and Polkadot because they kind of go hand in hand. So, yeah, if you, if you have any preferences or ideas, um, let me know. So, um, I'm kind of got a little bit of writer's block in a way. So, let's take a quick look at the CoinGecko Marketplace and see what the dealio is. And uh, Bitcoin sitting at 58136 It's up from 55000 yesterday whenever I was broadcasting at the same time. Um, Ethereum is at 34.9741. So it's looking pretty good as well. It looks like it might be a green day today. Uh, I think it is. So yeah, that's a good thing. Um, Binance at 649.48. The Doge. Uh, down 10% from yesterday. <laughs> All right, man. Finally, Doge is getting... I don't know, man. I just... I don't feel like Doge is going to end well. Uh, a lot of people were pretty excited about it. This guy I skate with uh, yesterday at the skate park, he was just like, you know... I was like, oh, I bought some of that Dogecoin too. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but uh, uh, just get rid of it at some point here. You know, try to find a good time because it's not going to end well. Um, and put it into something with some fundamentals. And now, me talking about, you know, ah, it's got to have fundamentals. I sound like a cranky old man in the crypto world. <laughs> so, I don't know. With all this uh, uh, safe moon and, and, uh, Dogecoin and stuff being uh, you know pumped pretty damn hard. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel like uh, you know, I need to live on insure milk drinks and uh, put tennis balls on the on the front of my my walker. So, but uh, yeah, uh, if you got Doge, 
great on you. In the past seven days, you've made 83% profit um, if you bought seven days ago. But uh, yeah, be careful. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, not financial advice, not some kind of TA dude, but you know. Um, yeah, just be careful. So, And I got people jumping on here to Latentry and 29LH06. Nice to see you guys. And uh, welcome, Latentry, if this is your first time. And 29LH06, thanks for coming back. I appreciate you coming back and listening and, and uh, you know, the stuff that you, you have to say uh, whenever I do stream. So, um, I don't think I streamed live Sunday because um, I was too busy trying to do that Komodo video. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so let's see here. XRP at a dollar sixty-seven, um, up twenty-two point seven percent in the past seven days. I, I I'm thinking I might do a video over Flare Network, and then because this Flare drop is supposed to be coming, I guess uh, in June, supposedly. And uh, the, the the story behind that is last December. I want to say December twelfth they did kind of an accounting of everybody in the world who had XRP in their wallets and uh, <clears throat> in, 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 in anticipation. And for those people that held XRP in their wallets, they're going to be giving an airdrop in order to bring out the whole, to usher out the era of the Flare Network and uh, the Spark Utility Token. And if you don't know what the Flare Network is, it's right here, here's their Flare blog, and this is the details of the distribution. Let me go to their website. I would, well, boy howdy, I just had it up. Here it is. Here's their Flare website, and uh, yeah, it's basically going to be uh, smart contracts for XRP. Um, yeah, the, the world's first Turing complete federated Byzantine, uh, what does FBA mean? Um, I had it up here. I actually went to their website. Yeah, Federated Byzantine Agreement. It's a class of scalable consensus protocols that do not rely on economic mechanisms to secure the network. So if you know what how proof of stake is, you know that it requires staking and uh, um, economic mechanisms to help secure the network. Well, this is in a way going to uh, be a type of system to secure the network that does not require um, economic mechanisms to help secure the network. Um, so not really sure exact of all, all the exact uh, details and, and you know, the machinery behind the Flare network, but basically it's going to be uh, give XRP um, and that whole group the ability to do smart contracts on their network in order to be able to use DeFi and stuff like that. So, uh, their own form of DeFi. So, it, it should be pretty interesting to see what happens with this Flare network. Um, so, the world's first Turing complete FBA network, scalable and doesn't base safety on a native token. It integrates the Ethereum virtual machine. Their consensus mechanism is built with Avalanche. And Avalanche, people say it's going to be a competitor or an Ethereum killer. Like I've said before, I don't think that there's going to be an Ethereum killer. I think there's going to be a niche for everything. Uh, XRP is kind of a banker's token, um, so uh, I'm assuming that Flare Network, I mean this might be the wrong assumption, is also going to be kind of a banking type of uh, platform and for a, a, a platform for bankers. And so what Flare is going to be able to allow is smart contracts built into that type of platform and uh, DeFi. So. <laughs> Banker DeFi, does this make sense? I don't know. Um, I'll have to go back and you know read the white paper. <laughs> so uh, it integrates Ethereum virtual machine for the deep pool of developer talent and easier integration into of existing projects because basically the entire world's DeFi right now rests on the Ethereum virtual machine. Then low transaction costs. XRP is supposed to be known for its uh, speed and low transaction costs and its scalability. So we'll see what happens with that. So it'll basically be smart contracts using XRP speed and scalability. So interesting. Uh, and and uh, yeah, hey, KSUHA, <laughs> nice to see you today too. Sorry, I couldn't say your name. Uh, but um, let's see here. Flare's native token is a Spark token. That's what's going to be airdropped and starting around June. Um, it's going to be collateral for that trustless issuance of assets for the non-Turing complete chains, uh, beginning with XRP. 
Um, so it's, yeah, it's going to be helped to use secure that. Uh, contributes to flare time series and Oracle network governments. Smart contracts a lot of times need oracles, so this is going to be part of their Oracle network as well. Um, and oracles, if you don't know, that is what brings data from the real world to the blockchain. And Chainlink is the you know the most popular oracle. There's others like Band protocol, um, and uh, there's there's actually a couple others too. Uh, Cardano has its own ver series of it. Uh, what is that? Emergo maybe? I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but um, let's see here, FXRP, bringing Turing complete smart contracts to XRP. So that's it. basically, basically, the, without getting in too deep, because I'm going to have to be doing a video on this, is uh, uh, Flare Network is going to be bringing smart contracts to XRP. Because right now XRP is, uh, is used for transaction speed. And people say it's going to be great for international transaction and international banking as well. And so it's going to kind of uh, ideally take the place of SWIFT. And SWIFT is the current bank-to-bank -bank transaction mechanism so or pipeline, I guess. I like to use that word. Can feasibly be safely pipelined to other smart contract networks as such as Ethereum. Okay. So that's a really bad explanation, but and I don't know what this cost on testnet is. Um, I'll have to take a look at this. Uh, this looks a lot like Hedera Hashgraph technology right here. Um, I know XRP is not a blockchain per se. So uh, just immediately looking at this, it looks a lot like some kind of Hashgraph technology, distributed ledger technology for sure. Um, and I got a 404 on that link. All right, yeah. So. That's that. Let's take a quick look at this blog post. Uh, further information on the Spark token distribution. Uh, this was posted in November 23rd, 2020. I have really not heard many updates about the XRP token, Flare, not XRP, the Flare token distribution. Uh, the Spark token distribution for the Flare network. Sorry, I can never say that right. And uh, somebody, uh, when I asked several episodes back about the status of it, they uh, posted it's going to be done in, in June. So um, I don't know where they're getting this information. Um, so I can't tell you if that is correct or not. But if you know, then let me know and show me the source because I'm curious to dig into this. Especially if I'm going to be doing a video on the Flare Network and the Spark Token. I want to have some like actual substantial facts and with sources. So uh, this post is intended to provide further precision about the Spark Token Network distribution mechanism. So they're not just going to dump one to one all the uh, Spark tokens per XRP token that you had. Um, that's not how it's going to go. They're going to ease it out in over I think a couple of years. Um, uh, give you percentages of um, what you had using this formula here. Uh, so Spark claimable equals XRP owned divided by the total of XRP total, XRP Ripple, um, XRP MPE minus each of those times 45 billion. Uh, here's where the variables are. Okay, Spark claimable, the amount of Spark claimable by an XRP address. Uh, okay, that's what that means. XRP on the amount of XRP in the XRP address at the time of the snapshot, which was December 12th. XRP total, the total amount of XRP in existence at the snapshot date. So the amount you had versus the total amount on December 12th. And then XRP Ripple. Um, XRP held in Ripple related accounts at the time of the snapshot, including escrowed balances. Um, I think that the point of that is to try to exclude some of these. Um, uh, the people like the, the XRP team, the Ripple team, and major whales and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure. XRP MP, MP, the, the XRP held by non participating exchanges at the snapshot date. So they're taking, they're, they're excluding the amount of XRP held by exchanges that were not participating in this program. Fortunately, the uh, I was uh, uphold. I had some XRP in there. Um, I had XRP in uh, the Auber wallet. And then I had some XRP in um, Crypto.com. So those three exchanges were participating in this. So. Um, to be eligible, provided you are not in a modified group, how many Spark you are eligible to claim depends only on the participation of exchanges. 
Um, so there are ways to get around if you had it in a hardware wallet or something like that. Uh, I did do believe I saw somewhere on a blog post before that you can figure out how to work around that, but that's out of the scope of anything of my interest. So, um, excluded are the the uh, XR Ripple in, Incorporated uh, employees and non-participating exchanges, um, and the people that are completely excluded are Jed McCaleb <laughs> and accounts that are known to have received XRP as a result of fraud, theft, and scams. I like that. This is Jed McCaleb and accounts that are... Anyway, unlike Ripple Incorporated and the non-participating uh, exchanges, the spark balances that would have gone to these excluded participants are instead to be placed in a reward pool to incentivize the minting of F assets, starting with X FXRP. All right. Uh, individual whale cap, so the whales can't just, you know, scoop it all up. And then a network launch will account... Uh, each account that has claimed Spark will receive 15% of the total Spark for which they're eligible. This is 15% of the Spark claimable term in the equation above. The remaining Spark claimable will be distributed over a minimum of 25 months and a maximum of 34 months. So, um, yeah, two to three years is basically how long it's going to be take or be able to be claimed. Um, I'm not sure, I, you know how long this distribution is going to be going on but basically you're going to get 15 percent at day one and then pretty much four percent uh per month um, after that for about 25 for for 25 months so um a, a month two years and one month so all right um all right so uh the average of pseudo random number draws should be equate to three percent per month at midpoint between two and four all right all this is getting pretty technical um if you self-custody, the system will deliver them to the flare address with which you claimed. This is the Ethereum style address that you set in the XRP message key field to make the claim in the first place. If you're claiming through a participation, participating exchange, they will distribute the token to your account over time. Um, all right. <clears throat> so why is it distributed this way? It's to provide strong incentives for network participation that builds utility. And basically, they just don't want you to dump it. Um, a lot of people, you know, they ah, free money, dump. And it's always been our stated position that the best people to provide capital, capital to underpin the trustless issuance of XX, FXRP on Flare are the people who own XRP. The only way to achieve this fairly is, 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 in our opinion, the distribution of Spark that is taking place. Rather than embracing Flare and Spark for the utility it creates, a certain percentage of people will wish to claim Spark only because they believe that it is free money. To reduce the negative effects from this dynamic, the amount of liquidity that can be put into the market at any one time is therefore limited by the extended unlock process. Network, network participation incentives and weak hands. Um, so, in addition to limiting excess liquidity, the structure of the distribution provides much larger, reward, larger rewards for participants that bring value and utility to the network. These participants that are either already have Spark through the claim or participants that buy Spark from the people that decided to sell it, the token distribu distribution structure means that the percentage rewards for participating early are the highest they will ever be. The rewards as a percentage then reduce in size at, over time as the network matures and token distribution unfolds. This boosted reward percentage is achieved without changing the planned token supply at all. So yeah, th there's no mining, um, there's no consensus nodes and staking nodes or anything like that in the uh, Flare network. Um, this is uh, you know all done through airdrops and uh, I've heard people say that the strength of the of, of uh, mining and proof of work is that it uh, democratizes distribution of tokens in order to be able to create a truly decentralized network and they were kind of uh, crapping on other type of network dis uh, no, token distribution mechanisms and one of those is airdrops and this is the one that uh, the Flare Network chooses to do I don't know. That's up to debate. Which one is better? How how is it best to distribute tokens to the community to make it fully democratic? Um, I mean, is the Flare Network even trying to be de democratic about this? So yeah, those are just some questions, and uh, yeah, could be interesting uh, chat room fodder. So <laughs> all right. So uh, how? Okay, this boosted reward percentage is achieved 
without changing the plan token supply at all. How? The reader might remember from the Flare white paper that the beating heart of the Flare network is the Flare Time Series Oracle. Uh, this is the system that generates in a decentralized fashion certain price feeds that are important to the network. Um, FTSO, the Oracle plays out a number of new, pays out a n number of newly minted Spark. This rate is set as is set at inception to 10% per year without compounding of total Spark tokens. This rate then becomes a governance parameter after launch. Uh, for example, if the network starts out with 100 billion tokens on day one, then the amount minted and distributed in the first year will be 100 billion times 10% equals 10 billion Spark. So they just basically talk about the distribution of it. The interesting stuff, I'll go into more detail with that. Uh, I'll link all this stuff so you can take a gander yourself. Um, but it does talk here about the oracles, um, the consensus network, network safety, um, and how the, the Federated Byzantine, what is this, uh, Federated, ah, oh, geez, <laughs> Byzantine agreement is the security mechanism. So here just to read this abstract real quick, the Flare network is the distributed network running the Avalanche consensus protocol adapted to federated Byzantine agreement and leveraging the Ethereum virtual machine. It can thus be leveraged as a scaling method for smart contract net networks without relying on economic safety mechanisms, such as proof of stake. Uh, the absence of a link between network safety and the network token and the native token, um, the, the Spark allows for greater flexibility as to how the native token can be used. Uh, the Spark dependent application model provides a blueprint for building applications on the Flare network. This relies on three components. Spark used as a collateral, Spark used to contribute to the Flare time series oracle providing on-chain data estimates, and Spark used as a participation token in governance schemes. So the Spark is going to be used, yeah, as collateral I guess for uh, the applications. It's going to be used as oracles and then it's also going to be used as a governance token. Interesting stuff, so um, yeah, quite a utility token. Um, so I spent a little bit of time on that. I wasn't actually planning on talking about Spark or Flare this morning. I didn't really have any plans to talk about anything. I just kind of wanted to show you guys a few um, websites that I came across that I thought were pretty cool, but I ended up talking about the Flare network and Spark token, and sometimes that's just how it goes. Um, I did find uh, some interesting websites. I'm going to listen to the rest of this interview today on the on the on my commute to work. It is the State of the Nation number 45 on the Bankless podcast. I listen to it on Spotify. Chainlink 2.0 with Chainlink God. And if you don't know who Chainlink God is, uh, let me see if I can find uh, find him because uh, I'm pretty sure it's a him because it sounds like a him, but it's an, an, an it's an anon. Chainlink God E 2.0. Yeah, I think this is it. And I follow this guy on Twitter. And uh, it's a really smart dude. Um, knows a lot about Chainlink. So, uh, yeah, if, if you get a chance to listen to his uh, breakdown on the Chainlink 2.0 white paper, I would definitely uh, listen to him talk about it. And um, he does a really great breakdown of it. I'm going to listen to it again, honestly. Um, but the guy is an encyclopedia of knowledge on Chainlink and then here he talks about Chainlink 2.0 and is interviewed and asked some really pointed questions by these bankless guys here and um, you know Chainlink God comes back with some amazing answers and you know I, you know, I thought I understood Chainlink pretty well you know um, maybe you know yeah but I really feel like I understand Chainlink and the utility of the actual link token very well now. Um, before I was just like, okay, yeah, it's going to be used, you know, to uh, um, to as collateral um, whenever staking comes around, and it's it's used basically to pay for the Oracle services um, by by projects and companies. But I did not really understand exactly how that worked. Well, Chainlink God breaks it down and makes it easy to understand exactly what Chainlink is and then the actual utility of the Chainlink token and then why, and then you'll then you, you fully understand why Chainlink is going through the roof right now and why the future of Chainlink is, is so bright <laughs> um, uh, as far as value. You know. 
So um, I'm going to be finishing up the rest of this podcast um, where they start diving into Chainlink 2.0 because the first half of the podcast, they're basically just talking about Chainlink in general and about what it is, what it does, and stuff like that. And then here, um, the, the next half of this podcast they're going to be talking about uh, Chainlink 2.0. So if I have any aha eureka moments, I will let you know. So um, I would recommend yeah, going in and diving in and listening to this bankless uh, state of the nation, number 45, Chainlink 2.0 with Chainlink God. And then if you aren't following Chainlinkgod.eth.2.0 on Twitter, go give them a follow and uh, listen to this here on Spotify, breaking down the information asymm- asymmetry with Chainlink God. So yeah, uh, yeah, I get my information from a lot of different places every single day and I try to keep it as broad as possible and you know, I'm a generalist, you know, and uh, some people like to be laser focused on specific uh, tokens and specific projects. Um, I, I find it hard to only be laser focused on one particular project that I like, like Theta Network. You know, a lot of people I see are are just laser focused on T Fuel and the Theta token and stuff like that. And other people are laser focused on something like BitClout, or some people, other people are like laser focused on Chainlink. Like uh, this guy's complete Twitter handle is Chainlink God. Um, then ETH 2.0. So I, um, I, I'm not one of those guys. I'm a generalist. I you know I. I'm jackass of all trades. I want to know. I want to know what it is, you know, what differentiates this from that over here, um, You know how many different genres there are. And there are a lot of different genres in this crypto space, and you can choose to kind of get in where you fit in within the crypto space even. Um, so, And a lot of this stuff sounds just like complete Greek to start off with. And you just have to kind of keep plugging at it. It literally is like, like a learning a foreign language you know I, I i i majored in spanish in college and i know french as well and um it did i did not learn those languages by just studying the books in class i learned those languages by immersing myself like deep in the language i would you know to and from work every single day i was listening to, to spanish radio yeah i, I didn't understand it but I was just kept on and kept on and kept on listening to it. And then over time, it became more and more clear to me. And then, you know, I know Spanish. I, I can converse very well in Spanish. Um, but the same thing with cryptocurrency. You know, I just started um, two years ago. would put it, put Spotify uh, podcasts into my, my earbuds and I would go running or I would you know, put it on my commute. I would just start listening to Chainlink or not chain like crypto podcasts and I had no idea what the hell they were talking about. I didn't even know what like KYC and AML was, you know, know your customer and anti money laundering money laundering. I just was just listening at zero financial knowledge. And then over time these concepts start to work themselves out. You know, for instance, KYC, you know, I had no idea what they were talking about. And then later on in another podcast, somebody mentions, oh, yeah, KYC means know your customer. And I was like, oh, so that's what they were talking about. So don't be discouraged if you uh, jump on some of these podcasts and if you're just getting into the crypto world and you have no idea what the hell anybody's talking about because I've been there before too. Um, and over time, it will all start to work itself out and you'll have a bunch of aha moments. And aha moments feel good. They're Eureka moments. You know, it's yeah, partly why my name is Eureka John because it's just all this never ending series of Eureka moments where you just say, ah, dude, aha, I get it. You know? So, yeah, that being said, don't stop, never stop, keep going, keep learning, and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. I just kind of talked about Flare and XRP, it seems, and that was not my plan. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to get on to work. I'm going to try to figure out what project-centered video to do. Um, it's looking like Flare Token or Algorand at this point. Um, so, give me your thoughts and opinions. Um, yeah, your opinion does matter to me. So... <laughs> All right, uh, and give me a thumbs up on the YouTube thing or the BitChute thing, the little flame icon on the Odyssey. Um, I don't ask for money or anything. Um, I'm not that type of guy. I, I get a paycheck, you know, so, um, and, yeah, I'm doing this out of, as a hobby, you know. Um, so, yeah. 
give me a thumbs up then. That'll help that way. I'll take any of the attaboys I can. Attaboy. All right. All right. Um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.